How's it going everybody? CJ here, back in another video. Today I'll be doing a deck tech of Tatiova Benthic Druid. This deck is actually a budget deck. The whole deck is under $50 and it's all actually commons and uncommon. So it's like kind of popper deck. It's a rare list, mythic list. And it performs very well. It's very value. It's a lot of fun to pilot. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it. But before we get into the deck, I want to let you guys know you got to like this video, comment on this video, let me know what you think, subscribe to the channel, and take a look down below. There will be links to my Twitter, Patreon, and then also a, an awards nomination thing. You guys should vote for me. Uh, I think I could have a chance of getting on the ballot for best new content creator and best uh, YouTube channel with a small audience. So if you guys can vote for me in both of those categories, we should possibly get on the ballot. And that ends in uh, end of December. Then the actual like ballot comes out in January. So remember to vote. And we'll get right into this video now. This deck revolves around a combo. And that combo involves either Ghostly Flicker or Displace. Because both of them let you exile two creatures you control, then return to the battlefield. And Peregrine Drake and either Archaeomancer, Scholar of the Ages, or Mnemonic Wall. Use, uh, using, say, Displace on Peregrine Drake and Archaeomancer lets you untap five lands when it re-enters and lets you use Archaeomancer to get Displace back to your hand. This lets you two mana each, time, each iteration, which results in infinite mana. And with the infinite mana, you can use cards like Azure Mage, Spectral Sailor, River Hoopy, or Lore Weaver to draw through your entire deck until you can hit Thundering Spineback. Thundering Spineback just happened to be the first card I could really find that finished off the combo for the deck, and it's kind of just funny to win with it. But it's an infinite mana outlet that lets you create an infinite number of dinosaurs, and so that's what you do. You win the game by creating an infinite number of dinosaurs and then hitting all your and then attacking your opponents with a bunch of dinos, and so that's how this combo works. Also, the uh, draw card the draw card outlets are also just very good in the deck alone, just because you generate a lot of mana and it gives you somewhere to put that mana, especially if you're empty-handed. And so yeah, that's the combo of the deck. And next we'll get into the ramp. Also filled with interaction, most of which is instant speed, but uh, some of it's not. There's a good amount of interaction in this deck. Stuff like Beast Within, Aether Eyes, Winged Coatl, which is fun, just a flash flying death touch. Lignify, one of the best ways to ner nerf a commander. Return to Nature, Manglehorn, Reclamation Stage, and Trigon Predator, all the hit artifacts and enchantments. But Manglehorn is just artifacts, but your opponent's artifacts also enter tapped. Merfolk Trickster, just kind of a little fun card, just to neuter something for one turn if you need it. And we got a lot of counter spells, like a whole bunch. Negate, Unwind, Nullify, Counterspell, Memory Lapse, Thrilled Mystic, Annul. Wait, what did, did I? Oh, no, no, it was Nullify. Okay, it's, it's just, there's Nullify and Annul, so it's just, that uh, scared me for a second. Uh, Power Sync. And Syncopate. A very big part of this deck, considering Tatiova lets you draw a card every time a land enters the battlefield, so there's a lot of ramp cards in this deck. Like Securitas Route, Lay Weaver, which can go and fetch Lore Weaver, which is very nice. Also, it doesn't actually put lands into play, but untap lands helps you out. Into the North, Farhaven Elf, Kodama's Reach, Sakura Tribe Elder, Far Wanderings, Spring, and Spring to mind because it also lets you draw two cards, so that's solid. Urban Evolution, draw three and play two, an additional land. That's a good card that gives you more cards in hand. Search for Tomorrow. I think this is a heavily underplayed card. Being able to spend it turn one if you draw it turn if you have it in your starting hand, one mana to end up with a land on turn what two, three, whatever. Real nice. Soul Ring of course. Growth Spiral. Far Seek. Cultivate. Explore. Hunting Wild. This card is also awesome. I think it's just a better explosive vegetation. So as you search your library for two forest cards and put them into play tapped. And you can use the kicker to make them three threes. Which is crazy. Like being able to get two shock lands with this is awesome. Obviously you're not going to do that in this deck. But in other decks. 
think this is an underplayed card as well. Colony Heart Expedition, Explosive Vegetation, Sky Shroud Claim, Wood Elves, Beanstalk Giant, and Spring Bloom Druid. So a lot of ways to ramp and therefore draw cards and gain life via Tatiova. Some good cards. Neoform's great. It helps to tutor up Peregrine Drake if you need it. If you have the other pieces and ready to combo off. Eternal Witness, and we got Regrowth to grab stuff from your graveyard. Simic Charm, which is nice, especially because it gives all your permanents hexproof until in the turn. Wilderness Reclamation, because of all the instant speed stuff, being able to have all the extra mana is really nice. Essence Flux for all the ETB triggers. Treasure Cruise to draw a bunch of cards. Hierogly the Hieroglyphic Illumination to also draw a bunch of cards. Factor Fiction, draw a bunch of cards. And Frantic Search. Draw a bunch of cards, but for free, basically. Basic lands. There's not too many non-basics, but there's some. Like, Evolving Wild, Blade of Woodland, because it grabs you some extra lands, so it's nice with Tatiova. Evolving Wild is nice because with Tatiova, too. Lonely Sandbar, to cycle if you don't want it. Bant Panorama, it's another fetch. Simic Growth Chamber is a bounce land. So being able to replay lands, like... With Simic Growth Chamber or Fetching Lands with Evolving Wilds, just gets you extra card draw off Tatiova. You're going to draw a lot of cards, so you need Reliquary Tower. Temple of False Gods, basically ramp. Emergent Zone, because Flash is fun. Thermorphic Expanse, another fetch. Simic Guildgate for colors, and Command Tower for colors. And then we got all the basics. This deck, I just have Snow Basics in it because I like them, but they're completely unnecessary unless you take if you take out uh, Into the North or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, into the north. So that's the deck, and now we're going to go ahead and show you guys the mana curve. As you can see with the mana curve, it's pretty heavy in the 2 and 3, and very, very light after 4. We've got a few 1-drops, not too many. And we got a good number of 2-drops. And so yeah, here's what we got for 2. Pretty large quantity there. 3 drop is definitely, actually might be lighter than 2. We got, it's pretty close though. 3 and 2 are very close to each other. And at 4 drops, just more ramp and more card draw and value and just, it's just a value deck really. 5 is where it's starting to get heavy mana, but it's mostly combo pieces. And most of what's after that is combo pieces. Except, so 2 combo pieces here at 7. And Beanstalk Giant, but it's ramp at 3, and then it's a huge uh, creature at 7 because of all the lands we'll be getting. Then we got Treasure Cruise, which is not going to end up being 8 mana. <laughs> and 2 X Spells, which are also not going to be super high mana costs. And Tatiova. So yeah, the curve is pretty heavy early and then really thins out to win the game stuff at the end. And... So most of what you're going to be using throughout the game is just right here. Since this deck is a budget value deck, it's kind of hard to judge what's... It's kind of hard to pull out anything in particular as really all-stars in a deck, other than, let's say, like, the combo pieces, maybe Wilderness Reclamation, Eternal Witness, because that also actually works with the combo, and it can hit other stuff as well. But it's... Mostly just very, very value stuff, and since because of that, it's there's no real, like, oh, these cards are very big highlight cards. I'd say Wilderness Reclamation is probably the biggest highlight card in the deck, other than the combo. And most, a uh, good portion of these cards are actually very often in Tatiova decks already, just because they're ramp cards that should be in most green decks, and value cards that should be mo in most green or blue decks, like Eternal Witness or Ghostly Flicker. And so, yeah, this is how the deck, that's how the deck works. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have, if you have any cool suggestions for this deck, keep in mind the budget, then please let me know down below. And if you have any decks that are similar to this, I would also love to hear about that. That's, they're fun decks, but trying to make a powerful deck out of all commons and uncommons is a very fun task, especially when you put a budget restriction on it because it, takes things like Sensei's Divining Top and Mana Drain out of the question. So remember, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, and uh, vote for me in the nomination thing. Yeah. And check out my Twitter.
and my Patreon. I I don't even know why I poked the Patreon at this point because it's not going to do anything for a while. But Twitter should. You guys should be on the Twitter because I'm going to do stuff related to maybe my EDH cube on the Twitter. And oh, Twitch. Check me out on Twitch. That's going to be a link down below as well. So do those things. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.